Welcome, everyone. Welcome uh, to this uh, important day. I'm Assembly Member Jose Medina, uh, Assembly Member in the 61st Assembly District. I'm joined by Majority Leader Eloise Reyes and my colleague, Assemblywoman Sabrina Cervantes. Fifty years ago, I was a student at UC Riverside. And I would walk from the UCR campus, from the A&I dormitory, up University Avenue to across the street where I worked at uh, Bob's Big Boy from 1 to 5 in the morning, cleaning uh, Bob's Big Boy while I was a student at UCR. And here, 50 years later, I am the state representative assembly member for the 61st assembly district my office is right across the way and now I chair the committee on higher education and so it is really important to me what we are doing here today and what we are saying here and why we are here today so we are here today because we are part of the same community the community that includes UC Riverside, but also the greater Inland Empire. The Inland Empire is my home, is our home, and it is unparalleled for its people and its history. UC Riverside is currently a top research inst institution and a Hispanic serving institution. It creates opportunities for first generation students, students of color and their families. Through its work, UCR has helped the Inland Empire become what it is today. But even so, we as residents of the Inland Empire know that California is a tale of two states, the haves and the have nots. And although California is the fifth largest economy, the economic benefits of the state of California are not all shared the same. And here in the Inland Empire and the Central Valley, we have been historically underserved, losing out to the coastal cities. This lack of equity begins with the schools. Last year, our newspaper, our home newspaper, the Press Enterprise, and the LA Times reported that UC Riverside receives the lowest amount of per student funding of any UC campus. This is compounded by the fact that 62% of the UC system's funding is allocated to campuses based on student enrollment. The irony with that is that UC Riverside, like UC Merced, is the campus with the highest diversity, is the campus with the highest number of students of color. And I ask everyone here, is that fair? So what can we do? That is what we are here to discuss today. A timely transformational investment in UC Riverside and UC Merced is key to spurring economic opportunity both in the Inland Empire and the San Joaquin Valley. A bill that I introduced this year, AB 2046, establishes the Inland Rising Fund, allotting $1.4 billion one-time funds for the 2022-2023 state budget at UC Riverside and UC Merced. This investment would expand campus capacity more rapidly to respond to the critical needs of the state and local region, specifically by addressing educational equity, climate change, healthcare, and research. The investment will result in the first AAU 
and only the second research one institution in the Inland Valley. Inclusively benefiting UC's most diverse student populations. Moreover, it will address the statewide issue of enrollment by providing more classroom space that is greatly needed and research opportunities for students, solving an ongoing crisis across all institutions of higher education. Last week, the bill passed with near unanimous support in the State Assembly. Moreover, I am grateful that that funding for UCR and UC Merced has most recently been included in the joint legislative proposal. It is, in it is indeed a significant step in the right direction and a testament of how California should be, not what it currently is. Today, I have the pleasure of hearing from so many people in the community. I will begin by introducing my colleague, first Assemblywoman Sabrina Cervantes, and later As Assembly Majority Leader Eloise Reyes. So Assemblywoman Sabrina Cervantes, thank you for joining us. Good morning, uh, friends, esteemed colleagues, and members of the media and our, of our community. We are here to make sure that the voice of the Inland Empire region is heard loud and clear. Funding public institutions of higher education is among the best investments we could make in the future of our great state. For decades, we have been working towards improving access to higher education, yet we have to be honest about the conversation about inequity, fairness on our University of California campuses. They are not all equally funded. Throughout our state's history, both the Inland Empire and the Central Valley have been underfunded, underappreciated, and underrepresented. This level of neglect also applies to the University of California campuses in both regions. This is why I am proud to be a principal co-author on Assembly Bill 2046, the Inland Rising Fund, which represents a strong first step in rectifying this historical inequity in funding amongst our UC campuses. We cannot claim to prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion in higher education when we ignore that some of our UC campuses serve our most disadvantaged students yet receive the least support, which is often reflected in our state funding. We cannot simply recognize the immense work universities like UC Riverside and UC Merced do to improve student outcomes for our highest proportion of historically marginalized students and have them simultaneously struggle to instruct our students in aging facilities and overcrowded classes. I am proud of the work that Senator Richard Roth, Assemblymember Jose Medina, and I have worked on to expand the UCR School of Medicine and very appreciative of the governor's efforts and support. But we have yet to receive an investment for the School of Medicine since its founding, which would be promising to increase pathways to medical professionals in our underserved Inland Empire. This isn't just about graduates and professional schools. We also know that last year, UC Riverside received the lowest amount of funding on a per student basis amongst all UC campuses. This is even more problematic when you consider the state allocates funding to UC campuses based on student enrollment. These processes and formulas to continue, continue to perpetuate this vicious cycle of UC Riverside and UC Merced not receiving their fair share of funding especially when they educate the most disadvantaged students. The Inland Empire and the San Joaquin Valley were hit the hardest by the COVID-19, and we've faced some of the worst health outcomes and increased unemployment and widening income gaps. Reversing these growing disparities is really dependent on our ability to invest in our regional UC institutions to ignite economic mobility where California growth is concentrated, and that is right here in the Inland Empire. Part of the irony here is that the Inland Empire is one of the fastest growing regions in our state, and it has been for some time, yet the UC campus in our region consistently gets underfunded. 
That is why we are here today. We are asking is that our inland communities, UC campuses, get closer to the same amount of attention and funding as our flagship campuses. This is without a doubt will include would, it would help with our inclusivity, benefiting our most diverse populations in our state, while creating greater economic outcomes and benefits and job creation. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Assemblywoman Sabrina Cervantes, now our Majority Leader, Eloise Reyes. Thank you so much. It really matters who you elect. When you sent Jose Medina to the State Assembly, you knew he was already, he had been a teacher for so long. He had taught many of our students. And from the moment he arrived in Sacramento, he has spent his time making sure the funding gets back to our community. Now I benefit too, because San Bernardino Valley College, one of the community colleges here in our area, is one of those community colleges that feeds the most into UCR. So whatever Jose and Sabrina does, whatever they do for UCR, it helps my community tremendously. I say that as a graduate of San Bernardino Valley College. When we're talking about equity, we have to talk about inequity first. There's absolute inequity. The amount of money that is coming to UCR, one of our premier institutions, is not enough. It's at the bottom. And how did I know that? Was it because I did my own research? No, it's because every single time Jose Medina, Assemblymember Jose Medina has an opportunity, he reminds us all of that. He is the chair of the Education Committee, but he also sits on the Budget Subcommittee on Education. So whatever school finance is going on in Sacramento, Assemblymember Jose Medina is right in the middle of it. And every opportunity he has, he reminds everyone UCR is not getting its fair share. UCR is not getting its fair share. You hear that enough, you're going to realize UCR must not be getting its fair share. And that has been his message, his continuous message, his repeated message when it comes to financing our institutions. The UC system is a great system. We provide so much funding. But nothing against my UCLA Bruins. But when they get too much money compared to my UCR, I've got a problem with that too. When, when Jose Medina, Assemblymember Jose Medina and Assemblymember Sabrina Cervantes talk about the Inland Empire, it's Riverside and San Bernardino counties. And I'm really proud to be with them on this. I was proud to see that in the legislature, when the legislature put together their budget to send over to the governor, we included exactly what Assemblymember Jose Medina and Assemblymember Sabrina Cervantes are requesting. That's included in the legislature's budget. Now the negotiations begin. But if they were not pushing for it, it wouldn't even be included. If it's not included in the legislature's budget, it won't be part of the conversation. This now is part of the conversation. And it will be until we get a final budget that we all will vote on. We have an opinion. We have an opinion, and the opinion is UCR is not getting what they deserve. We need to bring the funding here because UCR absolutely deserves it. Not only is Assemblymember Jose Medina the chair of, of education, do you have Assemblymember Sabrina Cervantes in charge of the committee regarding jobs? What a perfect combination. Not only does Riverside benefit, San Bernardino benefits. San Bernardino benefits as well. This is the Inland Empire. This is Inland Rising. Viva Not California! Que viva! I want, to th I want to thank all of you for being here, and I want to thank Assemblymember Jose Medina for his leadership and Assemblymember Sabrina Cervantes to make sure that UCR and the Inland Empire rises just as everybody else is rising. Thank you. Thank you, Majority Leader Eloise Reyes, for being here today and for your leadership. Now it's my pleasure to introduce my good friend and chair of the UC Riverside Chancellor's Latino Advocacy Board, Nympha Delgado. Good morning. Buenos dias. 
I am Ninfa Delgado and I serve as the chair of the Chancellor's Advisory Committee on Chicano Latino Affairs for UC Riverside. And I am here in support of AB 2046. Thank you, Assemblymember Medina and Assemblymember Gray and all of our legislative leadership for bringing forth this most critical legislation for the Inland Empire and the San Joaquin Valley. AB 2046 and the establishment of the Inland Rising Fund of $1.46 billion to be shared by UC Riverside and UC Merced would provide a significant and much needed investment to meet the needs, the demands, and the resources required to respond to the pressing challenges in the state of California and specifically in the regions of the Inland Empire and the San Joaquin Valley. It is no secret, as you have heard our previous speakers, that as compared to the rest of the state, the Inland Empire and the San Joaquin Valley have been and continue to be underfunded with the fastest growing populations. We have experienced and continue to be challenged with educational inequity, climate change, and health care. Our region, with nearly 50% of it Latino, is challenged by one of the lowest educational attainment rates in the state, with only about 2 of 10 adults having a bachelor's degree or higher, the worst air quality in the country, and a highly medically underserved region, which also, by the way, we, re we suffer from historically not only medically disadvantaged populations underserved, but also a shortage of physicians to meet the population, and also a reimbursement rate to Inland Empire physicians that is far below anywhere else in the state of California. AB 2046 will be a historic investment that will bring about an effective and practical solutions to increase equitable educational attainment, further climate change research addressing clean technology and air pollution, and increase healthcare providers who understand and address the distinct healthcare challenges of our regions. I encourage Governor Newsom to please support and approve this transformative legislation that will be a direct investment into our communities and have a significant impact across our state. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Nimfa. Now it's my pleasure to introduce faculty member of UC Riverside, Dana Simmons. Thank you, I'm so pleased to be here. I've taught history at UCR for 15 years. I want to tell you, my students are extraordinary. They're telling stories of people whose stories have never been told. We're talking about citrus workers in Redlands, Mexican-American communities in Colton. My colleagues and students, our students, have been doing research on warehousing, on the logistics industry for a decade before those issues hit the national news. I want to tell, please, Governor Newsom and to state legislators, give me some more classrooms and I will educate thousands of California residents. Give me some more research facilities and I will do the research that matters to California. I'm up for it. I hope that you are too. Unlock our potential. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Simmons. Now I'll bring up a director of CHAS Marketing and Communications and UC Riverside Alumni Association, Jeff Girard. Thank you, uh, Assembly Members Medina Cervantes. My name is Jeff Giroux, and I support AB 2046. I am the president of UCR's Staff Assembly. UCR's largest staff organization on campus, which advocates and supports more than 2,000 full-time UC Riverside staff members. I also graduated from UC Riverside, and I have worked at UC Riverside for 14 years. But more than that, I also live here. I live less than five miles away. I've taken my family to the movie theater behind us. I get my coffee at the coffee shop on the corner. I have seen the transformational power UCR has, not just on students, but everyone who works and lives here. UCR consistently ranks number one in social mobility. But what does that mean? 
UCR takes people from every background and economic status, people who never thought they could go to or afford college, and it changes their lives. UCR embraces them, it teaches them, it challenges and inspires them. Then it sends them out into the world with an entirely new life, a career, a chance to do or be anything they want, and not only uplifts them, but uplifts their families. UCR is the epitome of the California dream, of wishing and dreaming for a brighter, more inclusive future that uplifts all of us. UCR makes that dream a reality. UCR and Inland Southern California have been historically under-resourced. AB 2046 fixes that and provides critical support to UCR so it can make that dream as accessible and inclusive as possible. It also provides $80 million for new jobs for one of California's fastest growing and most innovative regions. My name is Jeff Drow and I encourage both Governor Newsom and Sacramento to vote in favor of AB 2046. Thank you, uh, Jeff. Now I'd like to introduce the president of the board of the Greater Riverside Chamber of Commerce from the Monday Morning Group, my good friend, Julio Figueroa. Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning to uh, our local leaders, our community leaders, and our, even our, some of our future scholars. Thank you for being here. Uh, before I go into my prepared comments, I'd like to respectively acknowledge and recognize our responsibility to the original and current take care, caretakers of this land, water, and air. The Cahuilla, the Tongva, Luceno, and Serrano peoples, and all of their ancestors, descendants, past, present, and future. Today, this meeting place is home to many indigenous people from all over the world, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to live, work, and even go to school on these homelands. The Greater, Chamber, the Greater Riverside Chamber of Commerce is the largest business organization in the region with more than 1,100 members, representing over 110,000 jobs, and proud to stand in support of AB 2046. The bill seeks to make critical investments at UC Riverside and UC Merced, both of which are in areas that have been mentioned before are historically unfunded. We are proud of the partnership to establish the School of Medicine at UCR, which is now educating hundreds of medical professionals annually. Upon graduation, these leaders go back to serve and improve quality of life in our local communities. However, the School of Medicine is, only, is the only medical school within the UC system that does not have a, teach, a teaching hospital. AB 2046 makes the needed investments to allow the school to operate as it was truly envisioned. As many of you know, the Chamber works closely with UCR, the city, and the county to bring the California Air Resources Board's Southern California headquarters to Riverside. Now AB 2046 helps build on this investment and showcases the companies around the world that Riverside is the place to be for climate change and air emissions research. We are pleased to stand together in partnership with all of you to say that now is the time to invest in the future of our, stu of our students, our economy, and our communities. Thank you, Assemblyman so Jose Medina. Thank you, Julio. Now we're gonna hear from those folks who this most impacts, and that is the students of UCR. And I would invite all the students who are gonna speak to please all come forward here at one time and if, if you may, and we'll start with Sarah, and then after Sarah, if you would introduce yourself. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to talk about my research. My name's Sarah. I'm a PhD student in the genetics program at UCR in the Nyer Lab in the School of Medicine, and we study the COVID-19 pandemic and how the socioeconomic factors have made that so particularly difficult for the Inland Empire. This research, uh, this funding will really make our research much more possible and able to expand to more people. Thank you so much, and I'd like to introduce another student, Ariana. Hi, everyone. I'm Ariana Firebaugh Ornelas. I'm a fourth year PhD student in the Department of Evolution, Ecology, and Organismal Biology here at UC Riverside. I study plants and the processes that are responsible for the biodiversity patterns we observe 
and how these patterns of biodiversity may shift in response to climate change. I'm here in hopes that this bill will be effective in not only supporting research that addresses climate change, but also to distribute funding to inland communities that have, at best, been underprioritized, but most often ignored. These communities are disproportionately low-income immigrant communities of color. AB 2046 is a first step in a commitment toward bridging the inequity gaps that exist in inland communities and ensuring there is a supportive and sustainable infrastructure for the students that drive the university's research mission. Investing in the inland UCs is an investment in socioeconomic mobility for the communities we serve. It's time to take action and make the investment. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Sanika Nishandar and I'm a uh, mechanical engineering PhD candidate here at UC Riverside. I, my research involves uh, air pollution modeling and wildfires and I, uh, AB46 supports, uh, AB2046 supports my research of air pollution for local communities because that is usually underrepresented in front of like large cities. So thank you. Thank you students, thank you to everyone who has spoken today, the students, the faculty, the alumni, uh, the, the, did I forget a student? Oh, I have two more students, all right. Uh, come on up students. Good morning, my name is Mai Nguyen Do. I'm a third year PhD student and teaching assistant in the UC Riverside Department of Political Science. And I'm here today as one of the tens of thousands of workers who make up Student Researchers United and UAW 2865, the union of teaching assistants, tutors, and readers at the University of California. It's an honor to be here today to support AB 2046. My coworkers and I have been organizing alongside campus community members for more equitable funding within the UC system for years. We've rallied coworkers, lobbied UC administrators, talked with lawmakers, collected hundreds of petition signatures, and more. This inequity has been deemed a form of redlining, which is where our campaign slogan to stop redlining UCR comes from. UC's systematic underfunding of UC Riverside means that graduate students who want to work cannot find teaching appointments, that undergrads share their teaching assistant with more than 75 classmates, that many of our workplace buildings where we teach and conduct cutting edge research are in dangerous disrepair that classes of 60 students have no teaching assistants to grade work or lead discussion sections. It's a tragedy that the hardworking students and workers of UC Riverside have not been given the funding and support they deserve, and it perpetuates the economic disparities that already burden our diverse, majority first generation and working class campus community. We cannot allow the UC system to continue hindering UCR students' success, and we applaud the assembly members for championing this important bill. UAW 2865, commits to organizing our union coworkers and other students, faculty, staff, and community supporters to assist in securing passage of AB 2046 and funding for all its provisions so that we can ensure equitable funding across all UC campuses. Thank you. Hi. Um, good morning. My name is Alicia Castillo, and I am the Vice President of External Affairs within our student government. I am here today in support of AB 2046 because I believe that UCR and UC Merced should receive equitable funding. UCR was the first UC to have a minority chancellor, the first to have a center dedicated to, standing, to staffing people of color within our resource centers. This year, I became the first black executive cabinet member within our student government. It is safe to say we are a campus of first. That being said, imagine if we were able to hire more faculty and staff to support our students. Imagine if we had more and better infrastructure. As a student who has rushed to class early in hopes of getting a seat, let me tell you, we need more buildings. We need more funding to go towards our resource, such as healthcare. We are the first to do many things. Now, imagine if we received equitable funding. We could be the first to do a lot more. I can imagine it. Can you? Thank you. Hello, good morning. My name is Yvonne Marquez, and I'm an undergraduate here at UC Riverside. 
as a first generation, low income, system impacted student parent, I can tell you firsthand the disparities that you see our face. As my work in the Women's Resource Center, every day I see students who are in need of housing or basic resources or just more classrooms. I encourage uh, Governor Newsom and the rest of the California to please support AB 2046. The Inland Empire is full of brilliant, brilliant people who just need the resources to have that social mobility. Thank you. Thank you. Before I begin again to thank everyone for coming, um, I, I want to point out the obvious and that why we are standing where we are. We are standing here in front of the University Theater, uh, a theater, a movie theater that has been used at UC Riverside for classrooms for many, many years. And as I work across the way, I see the students during the school year walking from campus, that same walk that I took 50 years ago to get to Bob's Big Boy. And it's not a short walk. You know, it's a 10, 15, 20 minute walk to walk from campus to this theater to come in here for class. And I can tell you that this movie theater was not built for a classroom. It is not adequate to be a classroom. But because of the lack of classroom space, it's been used and is used for classrooms. So that's why we are here today to just make it uh, very obvious the need for this investment. And with that, let me thank everyone for coming here who's spoken, Majority Leader Eloise Reyes, my colleague Sabrina Cervantes, administrators, faculty of UC Riverside, union members of UC Riverside, and the students of UCR, community leaders, uh, all of you alumni of UCR, all of you for being here today, and to say that equity begins today. Thank you all. With that, I will open it up to questions. And I'll, I'll bring uh, up uh, my colleague, uh, Assemblywoman Cervantes, as well, to respond. So, um, Ms. Cervantes, um, there is no doubt that uh, UC Riverside and the Inland Empire economies are intertwined. Um, when students graduate from UCR, we want this area to be a place where they can stay, where there are good paying jobs, uh, where there are high paying jobs. But unfortunately, historically, what has happened in our area is that many folks who, who, uh, who qualify or are ready for those high paying jobs have had to drive out of the area, drive out of the area to perhaps LA or other cities uh, along the coast. And that's why I think this investment is important because as UCR rises, so does the Inland Empire rise. And uh, 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 the late chancellor or the previous chancellor used to cite a number of how much what the economic impact is to this region of every student who comes to UCR. Assemblywoman Cervantes. Yes, uh, we know that there's still growing inequities in the Inland Empire and uh, same as in our Inland uh, Central Valley. Uh, even since the Great Recession, other parts of our states have done really well at closing uh, that, that inequity and those gaps. But the Inland Empire still remains um, far behind. And we see those in numbers as I chair the Assembly Jobs Committee. Uh, we see that we are still uh, far behind in uh, our uh, 
just our income gaps. And we need to make sure that we address that through a number uh, of different bills and through our budgets and making sure that we work with our budget subchairs to look at the data uh, to ensure that our small businesses are getting their fair share of funding as well. Uh, it's not just uh, the public institutions of higher education, but it's so many industries as well uh, that we need to make sure that we are looking out for our working families that are traveling outside of the region into neighboring counties uh, looking for work, uh, looking for good paying jobs. And that's what we're trying to bring right here to the IE are those good paying jobs. That, that all plays a role, which is why we're trying to look at some historic investments right now. We're looking at, uh, we're negotiating our, our budget and looking at what we can do to give back uh, dollars to uh, working families. And that's something that we're going to continue to negotiate in both houses and with the governor and hoping that we can provide some type of relief. Uh, we will provide relief. It's the amount that we're still working on at the moment. I don't know. Uh I was going to see if uh, our president of the chamber would like to respond. So from an economic development, I think, I, I think for us it starts with broadband infrastructure, and I think that's being addressed through all the federal dollars and state dollars. So I think we learned through the, uh, through the pandemic that many of our workers and students had to stay home and uh, either virtually work or virtually go to school. So I think for us it's, a, it's also addressing the broadband initiatives in this region. Uh, working with local leaders to take advantage of all the federal grant dollars that are out there. And I think that once we educate our future scholars, then these will be our future employees that we'll be bringing back to uh, economic development within the region. So, and we look forward as a chamber to partner with our local elected officials to get that done. To answer your question, uh, yes, uh, I have been in touch with the governor's office as recently as I think of Wednesday 